Hi everyone. After a video that I produced a few weeks ago on traffic light sensors, it was where the police car left the car park and got stuck. Um, I realised from the comments and from what people were talking about that they don't know a lot about traffic light sensors. So we're going to have a little look at this today. Um, we're going to be looking at the different types of sensors. There are a few different types, but more importantly, how you drive with them and what you should be doing. So, um, straight away, we're down into Bootle. We've got loads of traffic light junctions down here that I can work with, which is all fine. There are different types of sensor. Sometimes you'll find sensors on top of the traffic lights, like we just had on that last set. Other times you're going to find the sensors actually cut into the road. They work in different ways, but they pick up on movement. Now I'm not an engineer, I don't know exactly how it works. Now these could change because of the gap between myself and the Mini. So I'm just reducing and being careful and through watching the Tesla, I'm all good. So they pick up on movement, whether it be magnetically picking up on the car going over or whether it be an infrared sensor. I don't know exactly how they work. That's not actually that important. If you know these little pieces of information that I'm going to put out today, it's going to help you with your driving loads. It's also going to help maybe driving instructors in a particular way I'm going to explain shortly. So, on the approach to every set of lights, there are sensors and they're picking up on movement of vehicles. And the gap that I've got between myself and the Mini is probably verging on that space where the sensors might not think there's anyone there if our lights were on green at the moment. Now, I am just going to go ahead, have a little look at the sensors here. Is there any in the road that we can spot? Um, no, I couldn't see any there. Ah, we've got the camera up on the right hand side. So, there's no sensors in the road. Um, this sense is here, um, all the traffic obviously moving up. Now, look at the gap in the traffic either side. After the bus, is there anyone? No. So, that would say to me that it's someone else's turn. Is it going to be a different lot of cars or is it pedestrians? It looks as though, potentially, it's pedestrians. The pedestrians are having a little walk around the junction. I can't actually see whether there's any green men on because of these silver pieces of artwork that they've stuck on the pavement. Um, so... Now there's a, another gap. That's what I was going to say. The lights could change. So you, you're watching for space. You're watching for um, movement or a lack of it all the time to try and work out what is going on and what's happening. So um, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go left at these traffic lights. I'm just going to hold back and let this uh, Fiat out of that road. Now again, there's not much moving either side of this junction. So what I'd be thinking coming in, someone different is going to go. And it's just happened that the filter lane or the filter arrow in my lane has just gone on. So no issues. When there's a gap in the traffic coming out from this way, um, that will sense that and then let the other traffic that was to my right go. And it works like that. That's why when you're coming home maybe from a night out and you're in a taxi and the taxi stays on the main road be careful here because the gap's big so um, this crossing won't change unless it's been pressed so it's a little bit different with this go back to what i was saying about the taxi on the way home so if you're the taxi on the way home from maybe a meal or a night out then the taxi stays on the main roads if there's very little in the side roads which is likely if you're coming back later at night your lights are often on green, green, green on a lot of the way home. And that's how it works. They do have a certain element of timing to them. So in other words, if you're um, on a particular road, a busy road, it might have a set time before the sensors then kick in, um, but they are all censored. Let's have a little look at this one. I'm gonna turn left. I'm gonna stick my wheels on this uh, just bit just outside the ice. Now, there's again a sensor up on the right hand side. There's a gap in the traffic. So again, my thought process would say to me that it's someone else's go soon. If you can look at the lights across the other side, 
is if you look at the lights from both right and left, you'll then have a further idea whether or not that you're gonna go. And notice as well, while I've been sat here, I've put the handbrake on and I've put it into neutral. Perfect. Doing this teaches you to observe more rather than just be waiting in first gear and just being ready. My filter arrow's good. Yeah, rather than just being waiting in first gear and just being ready, if you take this approach, it forces observations. So let's have a little think about the right turn that I'm gonna do up at the lights. Now, gap in the traffic either side, yes, because there was no one moving. I was expecting that to change. Now, I've got a slightly different thing here because uh, what I was talking about was the two vehicles in front. Um, so I wasn't ever gonna go past this stop line until I was certain. So let's have a little think about what I've been saying about these sensors. There's plenty of traffic moving through side to side. There is a gap to the right now. You can often tell that when the filter traffic in the middle finishes. So I'm going to decide now at this point to put it back into gear. Although it's the pedestrian's time. We can also see all the green men on all the way around the junction. So it will be a few moments after the green men finish then it's going to release us let's have a little look there we go so it helps you anticipate rather than just being stuck in first gear and waiting all the time it forces the issue with your observation now if you're a driving instructor we can use these times and i call them lulls at sets of traffic lights to talk and to explain things. So if you're training to be a driving instructor, this skill is absolutely imperative. Now I'm taking the time getting here. My approach is slower because I'm trying to enable it for this to be cleared, which it is. I'm gonna slide it into first. It might be us or it might be someone different, it's us. So I was able to keep things moving. Let's have a little think of the same situation here. Now, there is a decent gap between me and the lights, but look at the traffic coming from the opposite direction. I'm gonna turn left here. And the sensors in the road were the different typed ones there. They were the ones that were cut in and the, uh, I think they were the magnetic sensors. So, because the traffic from the opposite direction was flowing at the same time as me, those two lots of sensors are gonna be linked also. So if there's a big flow from the opposite direction, even though you may have a gap in front of you, it's probably not gonna change, but you've always gotta be ready for it. So when you're coming into this area, um, risk increases, therefore you should be checking behind, seeing who's around and reducing your speed. So what I'm gonna do here is purposefully give a little more space. I hope I don't hack this uh, young lady off behind, but I'm gonna try and give you an idea what happens if you are too slow away. So I'm a little bit slow away here. Is that gonna pick up on my gap and change? Yes. So not many people are ever gonna be doing that purposefully getting lights to change but i just wanted to give you that example of how being too far away can also trigger the light so it's a funny little uh, funny little situation gap in the traffic either side here we go so notice i'm constantly watching even when i'm talking so it's a balance that you've got to get when you're moving away you've got to keep up with the flow but you don't want to grow your gap so big that the sensors think there's no one there and you're stuck at the front of the queue all the time so that's another little aspect to it. I think what I'll do, I'll head a little bit further up. I'm going to have a quick word about sensors on crossings with the one round the corner. Just hold them back, live this private higher. So crossings also have sensors on. This one's got one on the box on the right hand side. Now they'll only change when they've been activated. So they're a little bit different in respect to what we're talking about about these traffic lights but they still work with sensors so if you see someone stood at the side of the road at a crossing they've pressed the button you can even see that usually on the opposite right hand side of the road if you can see that and there's a bigger gap they're more likely to change so they're not just timed next little thing 
I'm going to try and dispel a common myth. People think that flashing your lights at these sensors makes them change. It doesn't. When you arrive at the traffic lights, the sensors, I'm not sure how far back they actually sense vehicles. Like I said, I'm not a traffic light engineer, but I'm not sure how far back they sense, but I would say probably about 100 meters because that's probably where often the sensors start, the ones that are cut into the road. So maybe uh, the, the ones that are on top that pick up on movement, maybe they're about 100 meters away. Couldn't guarantee that, but people say coming up to lights and if you give the, your lights a f um, few flashes, picks up on the sensors, the lights change. It's not nothing to do with that. It's literally because you are there, that's it. So don't think that flashing lights is gonna help you out, it doesn't. So no one's at the crossing, all good. That's only gonna change when someone's pressed it, so I'll just keep on flowing. So um, hopefully that little bit of information on traffic light sensors is gonna be a benefit. <coughs> Rather than having a fall asleep moment at traffic lights or an opportunity to use your phone um, try and take your car out of gear. Has this guy seen me? I think they have decided against using the horn. They stopped, so that was enough for me. Anyone at this crossing? Seeing who's behind. No one's there. Box on the right hasn't been pressed. Sensors are on top, all good. No one there. So yeah, rather than sitting in gear and just being ready to go, try and implement this into your driving if you don't do already, because it really forces some proper observations. It forces you to keep lively and keep tuned in. Um, driving instructors, like I said, if you don't know this skill, and you don't do this, you're missing out on loads of explain time at traffic lights when you're in that part of the sequence where you're not gonna change. So driving instructors should know this inside out. Crossing, no one behind me, really close, no one there. Fine, no one pressed the button, we're good. So I hope that all made sense um, as normal, not scripted, totally off the cuff, just uh, say what I see. Thanks a lot for tuning in, thanks for your support. I'll see you all soon.